This episode of Taproom Travelers is brought to you by Pep's Draft House Pizza. My name is Damo Makan. I'm the brewmaster, head brewer, chief brewing hooligan, chief brewing lunatic here at Summit Brewing Company here in St. Paul. Well, I, I really started learning about beer when I was living back home in Ireland. I come from a small town in County Kildare, and that town had a brewery and distillery for about 150 years. And when I was in secondary school, that's our version of high school, I did a research study on the local brewery. But it really evoked in me a sense of what brewing was all about in terms of the history, craft, the engineering behind it, and I just went from there. Ended up going to the UK and studying brewing science for about four years. I've been in the US for the last 18, 19 years. I basically uh, ended up at Summit through my uh, relationship with Mark, the owner. The previous brewery where I'd worked at, the owner was moving on to a different concept, and I went over to see Mark and I said, you know, is there any chance you've got a spot for a poor Irish lad who knows a wee bit about brewing and distilling, and uh, the poor man's been putting up with me ever since, thank the Lord. Well, welcome. My name is Mark Stutrud. I'm the founder and president of Summit Brewing Company. Well, I fell in love with beer in the um, Red River Valley. I grew up in Wapiton, North Dakota, but I grew up drinking uh, underage Schmidt Grain Belt in the front and back seat of a 54 Plymouth that he used to have towards the end of high school. Then a social work career led me into some serious home brewing. So back in 1982, I started doing research on starting a small brewery. So the beauty of starting early and being an old fart in the industry is that not only were I able to uh, really get to know the pioneers of the resurgence of small scale brewing in this country, I also had the opportunity to really connect and establish relationships with established master brewers that have been a part of the brewing community for decades since Prohibition. So literally, I had to retool myself, and then in the beginning of 1984 is when I started working full-time on getting the brewery going. It took me two years to do the business plan, market research, and the financing. We sold our first keg of beer in 1986 in the fall. So yeah, this is our 31st year in business. Our original location was on University Avenue in St. Paul. We started in 7,500 square feet of space in a former transmission shop and we had six employees in the entire organization. In 1992, we acquired the lease of a second building and then we had to construct a pipeline to be able to transfer the beer from the first building to the second. This brewery was the first brewery to be designed, engineered, and built from the ground up in the state of Minnesota since repeal of Prohibition. Currently we have a 150 barrel brew house, all copper. The equipment was fabricated in 1971. It's a Siemen brew house that we shipped over from Hernerbroi in Ansbach. Uh, we bought it in 1995 and shipped it over in the summer of 95 put all the equipment in storage before we even broke ground for this facility for two years. Uh, so we were planning ahead, you know, uh, between a Norwegian and an Irishman, somehow we incorporate an element, that quality of being methodical. When I started here 15 years ago, we were producing about 45,000 barrels. We've really added a lot of fermentation capacity back in the cellar. So the brew house itself hasn't changed, but over the years we've added more tanks in the fermentation area. We've increased the efficiency of our packaging line. And then just a couple of years ago, we added a brand new canning filler, which allows us to produce 12 and 16 ounce cans. But it isn't so much the size of the brew, but the fact that you have an experienced brewer that is carefully doing each batch. Because we do no blending here. 
for uniformity and consistency. Uniformity and consistency of that beer is achieved by the brewer, not by a bunch of machinery. My belief is that we have respect for the people who are buying our beer. We have respect for the traditions of our industry going back hundreds of years. We use the highest quality ingredients. We try to hire the best people, apart from characters like myself, but in general, we hire great folks. But at the end of the day, it's the people who are putting their hard-earned cash across the counter in a pub or in a liquor store. They're the people that we have to have the utmost respect for. So at the end of the day, really, comes across in how we approach that aspect of quality and consistency. That's what craft is all about. Quality is essential, no matter what size you are. It doesn't have anything to do with size. And quality is all about verifying what's in this glass. And that's measurement, testing, and sensory analysis. And all of that happens before the beer leaves the brewery. And I personally love making lager beers because they're bloody hard to make. If there's a flaw in technique, in ingredients, in the process, that'll pop inside of a pint of lager. If you're making a double IPA, you can literally hide a double-decker bus in there. There's so much going on with that style that you can hide a lot of flaws in terms of the ingredients and the profile of the beer. It's not the case with lagers. And that's something that we're really proud of here at Summit is, is managing those beers on a consistent basis, ensuring the quality is really, really high on a consistent basis. Well, Extra Pale Ale is the original beer that Mark created back in 1986. The Extra Pale Ale is really a beautiful beer. Back in 1986 when we started producing it, the whole structure of the beer is a classic British Pale Ale. And really what that means is that it's an extremely balanced beer that's also very en enjoyable with several glasses or jars, depending upon who you're talking to. Mark really wanted to kind of showcase the quality of European style beer, so he created this English style pale ale. And to this day, it's our, our best selling beer. Uses a nice combination of American and English malt. Really uses some nice English hops like Fuggles and Pilgrim. And also we throw some Cascade in there as well. So it's a very balanced, very complex beer. A lot of character, a lot of flavor, but also very drinkable. It's only about 5% ABV. 45 units of bitterness. You can go down to the pub, have a couple of pints in a session with the lads. You can still function the next day and, and get back to work. As brewers, when we're drinking an extra pale ale, we want to have that beautiful dance between all of the flavors that the ingredients contribute. I didn't want to have a hop dominant beer. I wanted to have hops in the aroma and some background bitterness. But before the finish, you should be able to get that malt signature. That malt signature is important to us because we're from grain country. That's our soul, and that's the soul of EPA. The Great Northern Porter is a very special beer for Summit. You know, Porter was the world's first beer style, but by the 1960s and 1970s, it was almost unheard of in its homeland of, of the UK. It was really the American craft brewers in the late 1970s and early 1980s that brought Porter back as a style. So it was the first beer to win a gold medal for us at the Great American Beer Festival. We also use a very, very special yeast strain from an old brewery in the UK. So in many ways, we're helping to keep that style going forward. We're helping to kind of keep it in the, in the public eye at a time when big hoppy beers tend to you know, be a bit more popular with the, the drinking public. I think something we're, we're very proud of here at Summit is our lager beer. We do a nice traditional Oktoberfest that can age that for about six months. We do a really nice lineup of traditional pilsners. We have a year-round Czech-style pils. We also do a, a German-style unfiltered Keller pilsner. We take no shortcuts. If we give you a lager beer, this is not a 21-day turnaround time. You're looking at six to eight weeks. Not only that, one of the rarest things about Summit Brewing Company is that we carbonate naturally. We capture the CO2 bubbles that are produced. It produces a finer bubble, it's softer on the palate, and it stays with the beer as you drink it. I grew up with this value within the family that you make something for a living. My father was also a perfectionist, and he would say, if you do something, you do it well, and you do it better than anybody else. So when it came to making a choice of getting into brewing as a profession, my father was right behind me, telling me that you do this well. So I think that's the key with all of our beers here at Summit. 
They need to have flavor, they need to have character, but people need to be able to drink them. There's not much point having a beer that someone can't drink, right? <laughs> and it defeats the purpose of it all. We're still a very young industry. People need to remember that. Craft beer in the U.S. has only been around for, in the grand scheme of things, only a couple of decades. Craft beer in places like the U.K., Belgium, and Germany has been around for centuries. It's never really changed. So we'll see an evolution of craft beer here in the U.S. We'll see a maturation in terms of the drinking habits of the consumer. And I think the brewers will respond to that. So these are some attributes that we hold and expectations that we hold for ourselves. And I suppose it would be pretty selfish if I decided to tell every other brewer that they should do exactly the same thing. I'm not going to because that's their business plan, but this is ours. Thanks very much for sharing a, a jar with me today. I'd love to see you here at the brewery sometime, and uh, all the best. Based out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and available in grocery stores across the Midwest, Pep's Draft House Pizzas combine newly handcrafted recipes, exceptional ingredients, and big taste. Each style of pizza is inspired by award-winning breweries and restaurants from across the country. We recommend the taproom double with double the sausage and double the pepperoni. Find it in your local Woodman's, Festival Foods, Lunds and Byerly's, and plenty of other grocers near you. Pep's Draft House Pizza. Tap into that handmade, big flavor, and bigger topping pizza. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.